Welcome back to my episode reviews of the original Rescue Bots cartoon. Today, we're taking a look at the episode Bumblebee to the Rescue. In this episode, Bumblebee from Transformers Prime visits the Rescue Bots, and he helps save them from a mysterious transformation lock virus. We begin this episode with Cody and the Rescue Bots staring up at the stars. So cute. But then a meteor scorches through the sky. For a second, I thought this was a Transformer arriving on Earth like they do in the movies. But no, turns out it is a meteor, because the next morning, everyone goes to investigate. By the way, turns out the island that the meteor crashed on is Wayward Island, which I know from RescueBots Academy turns out to be the Aligned Continuity's version of Dinobot Island. Although, there aren't any dinosaurs here in this episode. I guess we'll find out how they get there in a future one. So, the rescue bots are surprised and very excited to meet Bumblebee! Especially Blades! How do you do? I'm Bumblebee! No, I mean, you're Bumblebee! I'm... Blades! Blades! <laughs> Someone's a little starstruck, huh? Aww! Someone has a crush. Seriously, this is so cute. This reminds me of when Wedge met Bumblebee in Rescue Bots Academy. Hmm, maybe these two should start a Bumblebee fan club or something. Another bot? And he's yellow! Noble! Of course he's yellow, Cody. He's the Kid Appeal character. He has to be yellow. It's like a rule. I like how Blades mentions that Bumblebee lost his voice box in the line of duty. Although, it was actually crushed by Megatron. But I guess that would be too graphic a description for this younger kids show. He says he was tracking the meteor. When he saw it land so close to Griffin Rock, he decided to pay a visit and help us check it out. So I think we're to understand from this line that Bumblebee was actually tracking the meteor back at Team Prime's base in Nevada. I guess that means he knew of the Rescue Bots and Griffin Rock if he was using the Meteor as an excuse to go and check them out. And I'm guessing that he ground bridged himself here. That makes a lot more sense, because the first time I watched this episode, I thought Bumblebee just happened to be near Griffin Rock for some unexplained reason. Although I still don't get why the Autobots would be tracking Meteors. Maybe in case they were new Decepticons arriving on Earth? Blades, please let Bumblebee know where we are. You want me to talk to him? Okay! Again, Blades is so cute. Although Blades tries to show off for Bumblebee, he ends up embarrassing himself instead. Aw, poor Blades. We also get to see Optimus in this episode too, as Bumblebee phones home. Ahem. Optimus, sir, if any openings come up on your team, thank you for your continued interest, Heatwave. It's interesting that Heatwave wants to join Team Prime. I'd love to see a Prime version of Heatwave. In fact, I'd love to see a Prime version of all the Rescue Bots, including the recruits too. Although, if Heatwave were to join Team Prime, that would mean he would have to fight Decepticons. Meaning, he'd have to have some real weapons and stuff, because I don't think his water blasters are going to cut it when battling Viacons. Although, what about his own team? Would he really abandon them for a spot on Prime's team? Well, the rescue bots are then called on an emergency, where they must try and prevent a retaining wall from collapsing and burying the houses below. But something happens, and Heatwave, Chase, and Boulder transform against their will and are unable to return to robot mode, or even drive themselves. Fortunately, like the title says, Bumblebee comes to the rescue and is able to help Blades with the wall. It is interesting, though, that Bumblebee was able to transform with Cody still inside him. I mentioned in my Transformers Prime review of Darkness Rising that Miko was able to stay inside Bulkhead while he transformed. But I didn't think that Raph and Jack could do the same thing with Bumblebee and RC because of their more slender frames. Their interiors probably collapsed too much to allow for a human occupant. But apparently in Rescue Bots, that's not the case as Cody was able to stay inside Bumblebee without being crushed. So who knows? Maybe he could do the same with Raph. Although, I still doubt that Jack could ride inside RC. But moving on, 
Unfortunately, the bot's conditions grow worse as they are unable to speak as well. The others call Optimus Prime for help. I have consulted our medic. Nice. He's referring to Ratchet. Although, why didn't he mention his name? Optimus says that they need one of these disc things with the antidote to cure the other bots. But just like real life medicine, they'll have to figure out which one is the correct one to take. Otherwise, taking the wrong one could do even more harm. But it's funny, I don't recall Ratchet using something like this when Optimus was afflicted with the Plague of Rust. Although maybe that's because it was an invention of Megatron, and they didn't have an antidote on file. That's why they had to do the whole cortical psychic patch thing to get it out of his head. Similar to Optimus only referring to Ratchet as their medic, and not by name, when Optimus orders Bumblebee to destroy the meteor, he says he's worried about it falling into the hands of those who wish to do the Autobots harm. Which seems like he could be referring to the Decepticons, but who knows, he may be talking about Dr. Morocco or even Mech as well. The team arrives back on Wayward Island, but due to rough seas, Graham falls overboard. Bumblebee saves him, but that means he's stuck at the bottom of the ocean. But this time, it's Blades to the rescue, who goes fishing for Bumblebee and successfully hooks him. Look what I caught! With the countdown on the bomb already begun, Blades and Bumblebee retrieve a sample and plant the bomb. But they too are exposed. Luckily, the Burnses are able to determine which is the correct antidote, and the Autobots are healed. Although, it's weird how they are all given the same antidote, but the color of the liquid in the middle are all different, matching the color of the bot that they're put on. Also, somehow Cody is now able to understand Bumblebee, just like Raph. And we end the episode with them all taking a group photo together. Although, it's a shame that we don't get to see the actual photo. Otherwise, I might have used that for the thumbnail of this video. But it is really cute how Bumblebee asks for a photo of just him and Blades. Aww, perfect. That's what I was going to say, Danny. Aww, B and Blades are too cute together. They are definitely going in my top 10 ships video. This was a great episode of Rescue Bots. One of my favorites so far. And it didn't even have any Back to the Future references in it. It was kind of weird how the beginning of this episode felt a little reminiscent of the Bumblebee movie. I mean, we see a meteor land on Earth, and Bumblebee surprises everyone in a heavily wooded area. When I first watched this, I thought Bumblebee was the meteor, like Transformers in the movies. But it's still really weird how much this reminded me of Bumblebee arriving on Earth in the Bumblebee movie, which came out years after this episode. I also really like how this episode felt like it was connected to Transformers Prime. I hope we get more episodes like this in the future. And I would hope that more Autobots, like Bulkhead and RC, would get to cross over as well, but a quick check of the wiki leads me to believe that they do not, sadly. And speaking of Prime, what about Raph? Do you think he's jealous that Cody got to briefly ride inside Bumblebee while in robot mode? Or that apparently he can understand Bumblebee too? Or the fact that Bumblebee got to go and meet all these other Autobots without him? I'm sure Miko would be. Again, this was a really awesome episode. And it was so cute seeing Blades go all fanboy over Bumblebee. I look forward to seeing B and Rescue Bots again in the future. Speaking of which, Blades' is swooning over Bumblebee in this episode totally reminds me of his future student, Wedge, in Rescue Bots Academy. Aww, I love it. Well, what about you? What did you think of this episode of the original RescueBots series? As always, let me know down in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, and do all that other fun stuff. And I'll see you here next week for the next episode of RescueBots, You've Been Squilched, which Netflix has misspelled as You've Been Squished. Which one is it supposed to be? I guess we'll find out when I watch it next week.